Hi, I'm Charlie with Precision Matthews, and this is the PM1340GT that we've been working with. In our last video, we got this lathe from the crate onto the stand, and we made it look easy. Of course, anything looks easy when you speed up the video 250% and replace the original source audio to remove all the swearing. That's movie magic. As you can probably see, the lathe is not quite ready to make chips yet, so today we're going to clean it off and get it leveled. It's a bit of a dirty job, and I've ruined enough of these Precision Matthews polo shirts already, so I'll change into some work clothes and we'll get started. So how do we get the Cosmoline off? Well, we're not going to use kerosene, but some people do. It works well, is cheap, and you might already have it on hand. The downside is that it stinks up the room really bad, and if you don't dispose of the rags properly, you get a lesson on spontaneous combustion, and some handsome men in a big red truck with flashing lights come to your shop and yell at you. If you can open a garage door, set up a fan to vent the fumes, and dispose of oily waste without a combustion event, kerosene is an option. What about some detergent-based degreaser like Simple Green? That is an option too, but not my favorite. The problem with something like that is it takes absolutely everything off, leaving completely bare metal. You can follow that up with Rustlick, Bow Shield, or any other oil-based preservative, but if you miss a spot with that, you could get surface rust, even with minor humidity in your shop. So what we like to use is just regular old WD-40. The WD stands for water displacement, and the 40 stands for the age that you are when your back starts hurting for no reason and you have to buy reading glasses. Spray everything down and let it sit and soak while you go get lunch, then when you come back, all but the thickest sections will come right off with a rag and minimal elbow grease. Now is also the time to take any protective tape off the knobs and hand wheels, peel off any other plastic that the machine ships with, and screw in any of the handles or knobs that are shipped in the toolbox of the machine. It really doesn't take long and you don't have to scrub too hard. So find a towel that you don't care about and get to work. Like I said, most of it will come right off, but some thicker sections of the coating need either a second application of WD-40 or some work with a plastic scraper. Seems like the cross slide and compound castings get thicker coatings, maybe just because that's the part that's closest to the Cosmoline spray bottle when it's applied. So that generally needs some extra attention there. Clean off a section of the ways, move the carriage to that section, and then clean the rest of the ways. For the lead screw, you can use the old shining the bowling ball technique, gripping the rag from two opposite corners, and buffing back and forth. That's also how I dry my head after the shower. Now that we have everything cleaned off, we can level the machine. We'll put a machinist level on one, two, three blocks, so we're measuring the flats and not the tops of the prismatic ways. People often get hung up on this step, wanting to obsessively measure every inch of the ways and chasing the bubble around the vial for hours. Maybe I'm lazy, but basically I just do one spot around the middle, then move on to test cuts. I'd rather detect and correct twist in the bed with test cuts rather than a level, but feel free to yell at me in the comments if you have a beautiful vintage Starrett 9812 that was passed down to you through generations. Those levels are great tools and beautiful to look at, but if I spend too much time staring at the bubble going back and forth, I go feral and my wife complains about the metal chips in my beard. To show you just how sensitive this level is, here's a shot from above showing that we're level. And here is with me leaning a bit on the compound. Now I know I've been doing some holiday eating and drinking, but I didn't know I was all the way up to three and a half ticks on the machinist level. Fighting weight for me is just about three ticks on the machinist level. For another demonstration, here's our special precision post-it note from previous videos. You can see just how sensitive this machinist level is, and I would be a terrible machine tool salesman if I didn't also mention that this level is available from our online store and linked in the description.
The belt is shipped in the crate off of the pulleys so that it doesn't take a set while it's sitting there. So the last thing we need to do before we make chips is to put the belt on. Using only your fingers, not pry bars or screwdrivers, you slide one end on, then rotate the pulley by hand and slip the rest on. Belt tension on the 1340 GT is actually even a little more than the weight of the motor, so pull down a little and tighten the motor mount screw. About this much flex is what you're looking for. And with that, we're basically done setting up the lathe. Add whatever tooling you need and the machine's ready to make its first chips. In our next video, we'll show you how to dial in the lathe even more and the easy way to cut a test bar to get that last bit of twist out of the bed. Be sure you're subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future videos like that. And as always, we welcome the discussion that we've been seeing on these videos. So if you're a better person than me, tell me in the comments how you can straighten the entire bed of a 40 inch lathe using only the level without cutting a test bar or losing your grip on reality itself. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching.